Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast for round number two. Uh, but this time we're in person, and gosh, I just can't explain the difference of what an in-person interview does versus a phone interview. When we first got started, Jamaica Cottage Shop, we interviewed uh, Dominic. A lot of you guys will remember he's like one of our first 10 episodes. Um, but got to be here today actually at the shop and it has so changed my perspective, and I think that's why in-person communication and even podcasting is so much more beneficial. So let's just do like a little round robin here, and we'll start over here, and let's just do some introductions, and I don't know, maybe job titles or what you do. Um, I'm Buffy. I am currently the uh, creative and marketing director here at Jamaica Cottage Shop. Perfect, and the person that I've been communicating with the most who's – picks out the absolute best camera spots in all of Vermont. So everybody should know that. Uh, next we have. I'm Joe. Uh, I'm the head of the drafting department. And by drafting, you mean a lot of what you guys do. I know you work in. Like- uh, yeah, we draft up all the CAD models, the drawings, and um, that translates into cut lists and um, the plans. And it kind of runs throughout drives what what everybody does okay the starting point pretty well and then next uh i'm andy scullin i am um social media manager and uh, affiliate manager so i I handle uh, the day-to-day social media stuff and um any of our affiliates we have affiliates online and a couple that are locally that i take care of in person very cool. Also has a really awesome radio voice. So <laughs> Thank you. The, we have that because he's a podcaster. He's a fellow podcaster. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually why you know I've only been here what eight months or so, so I know very little. But Buffy said, "Oh, you've got a radio voice. You're coming on the pod- <laughs> you're coming on the podcast. You make a sound us, better so. if nothing yeah. else. You know, I have twenty something years in broadcasting. So very nice." But, but only about eight months in sheds. Yeah. Well, you, so you do like a podcast on like music. Yeah, I do a local music podcast where I have, you know, local musicians on and kind of the same you were saying, everything low key. You yeah. Know, it's just like a yeah. easygoing conversation. Do you like yeah. name drop? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could name drop. I've had, uh, wow, I've had 80 something artists on a band called eerie a band called seas atlantis that just won a bunch of awards locally and nice and, uh, yeah it's fun always yeah. makes it uh, fun when it's something you enjoy so much yeah. it's re- the conversation is really really easy and it's uh, something that i do at home and i get all these cool bands to come to my home studio so yeah well so. you know the, the the podcast here man started out a labor of love and i want to keep it that way you know if i can but i really do enjoy talking sheds with people uh the sheds is just kind of like it's the people business you know when it's all said and done so i enjoy communicating with people and then last but certainly not least we have virginia i'm virginia yeah um i uh, work with buffy i'm erp and web support um i was originally hired back in 2002 so i've been with the company on and off for a long time so a veteran uh here with the company and uh, i think the company started in what like in 95 95 okay yeah so you've been with them a good stay of that let's let's just start there we'll we'll put virginia on the spot right off the bat um what's the company look like now versus then i mean what were you guys doing whenever you guys started is it is it way different it's way different um when the company started we were in a different location down the road to start with we only offered fully assembled buildings in a local delivery area. Um, the first kits that we put out were actually ready to assemble kits, so they were panelized. And I think the first one was a greenhouse or a four by six gable, something like that, that we sent out to the Midwest. But. So, yeah, one thing that I noticed in being here versus definitely like a phone call was uh, I remember the conversation about kits. Right. But uh, I don't think people have an appreciation for what that means until you come here and you really see it. Right, Andy? Like it's it's a new level. Yeah. And I mean, and I, you know, not having shed experience for me, it was really cool to see how everything worked for the first time. But to see like how the kit is literally a kit and it's everything you need is right there and it gives you the chance to 
hands on build something even if you're not i mean you know we said earlier i i don't have basic carpentry skills but a lot of people do you know so that's all you really need to be able to take this from a, a raw materials essentially that are pre-cut into a, a structure which is is kind of a cool thing to be able to offer people yeah yeah i think that whenever you're here kind of doing a walkthrough uh, it changes the dynamic so much from the listener perspective. And we try to get a little B-roll. Maybe we can throw that in on the YouTube side uh, where people can kind of see. Um, but it's it's really, uh, yeah, in most of the United States, it seems like that's not super common uh, kits. I mean, most of it's backyard storage. But you guys are doing a, a lot of different things. And part of the reason for this interview is, you know, I mean, it was uh, the company was sold. You have new ownership. Uh, I think WHS, I think, is the is the the owner, the new owner. But they do a lot with what we're seeing here with manufactured housing, I, I suppose. But you guys kind of offer so many different categories here. And probably one of my, my favorite things is the customization, right? Um, speak a little bit. Speak a little bit on that. <laughs> uh, that would be too. Joe. <laughs> The customization has become endless. It used to just be standard kits and sheds and any the customization, but we've really integrated that into um, our website and what you can purchase. And then we have to follow through with the documenting how to make those changes in the plans and making sure you get the right materials and that we keep the right materials in inventory and take them out of inventory. So it, it's challenging, but I think that's one of our strengths. Is and it allows you to kind of take our buildings as a starting point and go wherever you want with them. So is that kind of uh, what you hope to do? I mean, you guys are, are sending these kits all over America. Um, you're hoping to kind of engage the DIY personality to where they could maybe do a little bit more. Uh, and we can get into that in a little bit, but like take, take me through the process. Uh, Joe, is it just Joe? Should I just, Joe, Joey, I don't know. Joe's good. <laughs> Joe's good. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we've been talking all day, and I'm, like, just now figuring out names. Um, Joe, tell me a little bit about, like, how the process works. From the sales process, whenever you do some customization like that, how does that work with, like, CAD program? One thing I find interesting for what I think what the, uh, the listener would find interesting is you guys are somewhat vertically integrated, but it's 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 a – it's a bit different. You're not using necessarily a 3D configurator. You do a lot of that stuff in house. Uh, yes. You you build in house, and then you have to sometimes maybe even do a, a customized specific building. So you got to build out the parts list, the instructions for that. Quite the process, right? It it can be. And let me go back to Virginia's start because she was the original drafting department. Okay, <laughs> um, and she did all these plans in in 2D and a very um outdated program that's i mean when i work in it now i'm like i cannot believe that you <laughs> were able to do this so when i came on we turned all those 2d plans into 3d models and in our plans we're using 3d views and things that are a little bit um they're a little bit easier to grasp visually looking at them and how to step by step build these buildings so a custom Anything custom, we can go back to the model and say, okay, well, we're going to need this much to do that. And you can lay things out and say, well, this door is not going to fit there because of whatever the reason. Or if we move it over four inches, we can fit it. Um, kind of like the building that we're in. If you this door over here, you know, it can't. You can only go so far over with that door uh -huh. before it's not going to work. And we're able to see that and kind of find the problems before they're actually real problems in, you know, you're wasting material. So I, the computer is really powerful in what we're doing. Hello, Shed Builder. With each new year, builders are searching for ways to increase efficiency and safety. Simply put, the Joey Pivot Lift is an investment into your building crew and your bottom dollar. Manufacturers are able to save hours and dollars by making painting, decking, and roofing a safer and quicker process. The Joey Pivot Lift turns 360 degrees inside of a 50-inch radius and lasts an average 8-hour workday before needing charged. 
It has a minimum platform height of 61.5 inches, allowing you to reach into areas with ease versus the traditionally used six-foot ladder. No tripping or falling hazards exist, and no need to climb down and restock. For roofers, simply load your metal on the lift prior to getting started and throw your roofing screws into the built-in tool tray. Pricing is just $8,295 for the 60 series, $9,685 for the 70 series, and $10,675 for the roofing model. For exact pricing that includes tax and delivery to your door, contact the Shed Geek at info at shedgeek.com or dial 618-309-3648. We're raising building standards with Joey Pivot Lift. So so how does the process work then? Like, So a sale comes in, uh, anybody, feel free to, to answer this. A sale comes in, but that, that customer's in Nebraska, and that customer found your, you know, what you offer online, went to your website, um, do they build that out on the website or, or do they talk with a salesperson and then that hits your department? Both. They could do it solely on their own on the website. Um, some people work with the sales team. So either way the you know, the order is placed and then it, it's given a spot on our schedule and then it'll come in front of me and my team. And based on what, you know, we can look through at what they order it's, it could be something that we haven't built yet and we have to make it up for the order or we haven't done that option and we'll have to make it uh, do drawings, figure out the quantities. Um, another thing that we offer is uh, me, uh, my team and myself, we are the tech support team as well. So if you get this and you don't understand it or, um, you know, sometimes we make a mistake we can work through it and figure out how to get you rolling again or advise you on what, what people call us before the sale to say, what, you know, will this work or here's what I want to do. And we can talk through them with that. Or if you're in mid build and you don't know what to do, we can kind of help you through with that too. And then um, these things go to the, go to the proper departments to where you start actually assembling and put this thing together, like you, your explanation was like like a like a Tetris, almost, uh, which is a perfect explanation on, onto a pallet. Yeah, they have to fit an unbelievable amount of wood In a onto small a, onto a, a confined <laughs> pallet that is a perfect rectangle and can be put on a truck and moved and not fall apart. And then this, so I mean, you guys will ship, and you you guys will ship out of country. Uh, I think you do some international stuff. Um, pretty well everywhere in the States. I don't we mostly do here. Well, we do Canada. In, well, yeah. It gets us international. <laughs> that gets us yeah. international. <laughs> but we <laughs> ship to port, so you can, you know, if you want to arrange the shipping gotcha. to Europe from New York Seaport, you certainly can. And then, like, what, what sizes will these be? Uh, like, I mean, you do pretty large sheds right from a three foot by five foot to 24 foot by 48 wow. and all sizes in between i think we counted the other day and our biggest one was go for it i think we counted the other day and our biggest one i think was 13 or 16 pallets wow i forgot that's in, that's intense so yeah it was we, it was a very like it was an insulated like it was a cabin it was like a 20 four by 40 or something. It was like our biggest one. So, so you guys will do Buffy, you guys will do like, um, um, finished out completely models, but you'll do a small, more simplistic shed model. Definitely. And the finished out is, that's a, that's a question. What are we specialize in is the structure itself. And then, um, we really leave the finishing out to the client. So, when you're building something, you know, you can get the structure from us and then you really have like a, a open canvas, like a blank slate to finish out however you like. It's, it certainly helps uh, navigate around. So the, the self-diagnosed shed geek opinion here is the shed industry sort of represented by the shed seller, the shed hauler, the manufacturer, and then the products and service um, so from the hauling perspective, it definitely takes a lot of that out of the equation. I mean, you guys still haul here. You have an integrated 
hauling, you know, you've got your mules and your trailers and your trucks and all that. And you guys go out and deliver in a certain radius or whatever, but it, it takes that aspect out of it. Whenever you're putting these things on a perfect rectangle and shipping them to Utah or whatever. So, I mean, it changes the game as far as like being able to deliver What's some of the, the challenges, the biggest challenges you found in offering kits so far? I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that, but... Um, I got the challenges. Right. <laughs> you got them? Yeah, yeah, but I got the guy right now. Bring it on, Joe. <laughs> what you got? I got the challenges. Well, you're having to account for every piece in a building and that it is cut correctly and put onto this pallet. So... I mean, any miscut piece or, or missing piece is a problem even here in Vermont because it costs us money and time oh. to get it there. But becomes almost impossible when you're in California, or you know, and and we're in, you know, if it's a big piece of lumber and it's got a piece of shake in it, that's a real challenge for us to get it all in there. So you got to be able to see all the problems up front and try and account for them. I would imagine you know this by experience that there's been a few times that things only, just only don't once. go. Yeah. <laughs> we do send a little extra lumber. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, it makes sense to uh, just in case. I mean, it's better to send a little bit too much and then right. and then not be struggling on the the back end of trying to get something to them. Um, what are some of the challenges, Joe? Like that that builders run into are they calling you constantly and they're like hey we um, thought this would be easier you know we get quite a few calls even from experienced builders because a lot of our frames and stuff is post and beam construction with full roughs on lumber not your standard two by four um kd stud wall like yeah. stick built uh so it's just it's outside of the realm of uh the majority of carpentry most people get it, but there, you know, there's some little differences that um, that have to be accounted for, and some people just aren't used to it. Certainly set you apart, though, as far as like what you offer, because you guys even do the post and beam inside a lot of your traditional sheds, right? That's the majority of our construction is the post and beam, which I yeah. think gives it a, you know a unique look with the roughs on lumber as well. Do you guys find that like difficult as far as like? Um, um, transportation, you still use a typical skid or, you know, runner uh, I would just, to build that on top of, and then you just move it by truck? For the fully assembled, yeah. I mean, we, we stuff that has to go over the road, we put a little bit more reinforcement to make sure that the skid stays attached and that things are, yep. are good. Um, a big part of it is getting it on and off the truck because it introduces some... Uh, point loading where you've got the whole building suspended by both ends so on something like we're sitting in a 1430 the that's considerable force yeah. and then the where it's taking the load in the front is just a porch so there's not a wall to help it so we've got to build things in to uh try and make that easier and ensure that it, a, a little extra lumber in our yard is well worth not having any problems on the road or on delivery Andy, like, what do you, what do you, uh, you do a lot of uh, social media posts. Yes. Uh, what do you find to be some of the most challenging opportunities to explain this product to, like, a customer base? Uh, I mean, as far as explaining the product, I think everybody kind of gets it. Uh, my biggest challenge is, um, I guess, engaging into a design, like, you know, if, if I'm, showcasing a certain design you know obviously i don't want to change anything um digitally on the actual building itself but i do like to make backgrounds come alive you know because a lot of the pictures that i'm getting are from the yard and rather than a you know a forklift in the background you know i want to want to so i think that to me is the biggest challenge because i can obviously see who engages with what pictures uh -huh. um and all, I mean, all of the designs that we have obviously are, in my opinion, top notch, depending on what your need is. But it's, it's just funny that which, I guess, which pictures and which designs will catch on and really get a lot of engagement. A lot of the times are ones that I wouldn't expect where I'm like, oh, 
okay, okay, you know, there's there's that one that has a thousand likes, which I didn't think would get anything. You know, it's uh, it's kind of wild to see what makes something go viral. Yeah, um, log cabins or that that's like we're in a we're in a community where I mean we're in we're in like. I don't, I don't know if I'd say snow country, but we're definitely in like... Oh, we're in snow country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys are going to get like... I, I found it so interesting, and I'll just... This is kind of just ad live here, but when I stayed at the campground, which is like what, like a mile down the road from where you guys are, I pull in last night and I'm talking to the guy, and he's just doing the check-in process or whatever, and I'm like, uh, wildlife, anything we should be like aware of? And he's like... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we, we do have bears. And uh, I think he said like a couple of days ago, the campers on the south side of the the property, they left some stuff out and bears got into them. So I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're serious? You know, because I thought the guy was joking with him. Like, no. Like, I said, like I said, I saw a bear a one mile from here a couple of days ago at about 1130 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, your, your story is interesting because like you grew up here. Yes. And there's bears. I mean, there's bears <laughs> everywhere. Uh, there's always evidence of bears, you know, getting into garbage or scratching on trees. And I'm 50 years old and I just saw my very first bear in the wild a couple of days ago. Everybody else was like, what? Are yeah, you serious? Yeah. Everybody's like, I see bears all the time. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I guess wrong place, wrong time. I've never seen a bear until a couple of days ago. Shedhub.com is the shed industry's very first two-sided marketplace that allows you, the shed seller, to list your inventory on a site specifically designed for selling sheds. Shedhub establishes more qualified sales leads and helps your customers find you with a simple online search. Shoppers searching where to buy sheds and sheds near me have grown by 200% in the last two years. This means even if the buyer wants to visit a sales lot to purchase a shed, their shed buying journey started with a simple Google search. They can actually check out and purchase the shed straight from ShedHub if they prefer to shop online. ShedHub does not charge any commission for sheds you sell. We simply charge the monthly subscription. Your sales commission is still yours to keep. Sheds listed on ShedHub will have first page search results in 91% of cities or where to buy sheds is searched. For special pricing, only available through ShedGeek. Simply go to geek.shedhub.com to see the promo codes that allow you to save as much as 50% off the first 12 months of your subscription and over 75% for companies with multiple sales locations. Sell more sheds using shedhub.com. Well, you guys have like the the ski resorts and, and things like that around here. So that kind of attracts sort of the the build of what you guys have going. I mean, to me, what I think of is you definitely want a log cabin in like the, the hills somewhere. You want them in a valley somewhere. Yeah. And it's funny you say log cabin because that's specifically the post that I was thinking of that went far because we're um, selling a log cabin now, but none of them are actually built yet. So all I had was one of Joe's 3D models of a log cabin. And I was like, you know, nobody's going to, people are going to be like, ah. And I, it got a lot of likes. You know, people were like really into it, and it wasn't even a real, you know, a, a realized building. I guess you know. So just sheds in general. Uh, speaking just on that, because kind of what you guys do so much. I mean, you have like the rough cut finish on the outside. Um, do you, do you find that to be more of a just by happenstance that you're here and where you are in in New England territory, or do you do you kind of feel like it fits the customer everywhere. Uh, do you feel like that's something that like you guys can, you're, 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 you're the ones that you're sending out on pallets. Uh, what's the finish on those most of the time? Generally rough on. Okay. Customizable. Customizable. Yeah. That, that's good. We have a lot of different exciting options. Well, um, I, I think whenever I get up here, it's so interesting to see the difference in the models. Um, Probably one of my favorite things is traveling all over the U.S. because you get to see what they're doing in Texas. But you might get to see what they're doing in Seattle. And you get to see what they're doing up here. And uh, I still think that there's kind of like this, I don't want to say east versus west, because there's like salt and peppered from each category in the other. Um, 
But it, it is certainly interesting that there's so many different types of models up here in the way that you guys, what I would think of as a, a cookie cutter shed business, not to, you know, I, I, and I, that's not what you guys are. Right. And I'm not trying to, to uh, insult anyone in that model. It, it just, I think a lot of customers are looking for like just a generic shed and they need something for storage. It's real simple. You guys are really operating in a different capacity. That was the, I mean, essentially the whole basis of the company to start with was to offer something different than the cookie cutter style shed. Which we do, but we have some crazy ones too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But it's something definitely more rugged, um, full dimensional, natural wood instead of T111, things like that. There's, who, who is your, your ideal customer? Who's like kind of your target? And maybe that, Andy, that might be a question for you since you target those guys. I'm not sure. But. Uh, I mean, I feel like, you know, certainly with the short time that I've been here, that it's definitely the more DIY. Um, the people that want to build, I mean, I guess homestead might not be the correct word, but kind of leaning towards that. People like, you know, that want to build something themselves so that they can say, hey, I made that rather than just, somebody came and dropped this thing off. Um, And I feel like that's somebody that has maybe a little more care about, you know, what's, you know, because if you just want storage, then again, you just get a storage shed. But Mm -hmm. if you want something with the post and beam, something that you're building yourself, um, even if you are not a master carpenter. um, But yeah, I think that's who it is. It's the the DIY, the people that want to, want to get things going for themselves like farmsteaders certainly did you get it i, I tried did, him so new, new sound marker <laughs> yeah new sound marker and a still live mosquito yeah. you scared him though you got him. we definitely um we sell a lot of fully assembled buildings locally and people really like them and it's something really cool that we can do and we have a really robust logistics operation to make that all happen. But one of the things we really do like to do um, is empower people to build, and we really like that aspect of it. And then, the, um, yeah, maybe our favorite projects are the ones that people really do get passionate about, and then they want to build it themselves. And we do have several people that have built multiple structures. And Andy was saying, like, he doesn't even have basic carpentry skills. Yeah. Some of our smaller <laughs> projects, like our you know, you need basic carpentry skills and then you can build this. And then you build up from there and like things like our uh, our Vermont cabins and our much larger buildings, those you definitely need more advanced carpentry skills for. But So how many styles like as far as like a just traditional style do you guys offer? I mean, outside of the customization, because you have a wall full in there of like different Awful. Yeah, there was like well, many different designs. We have, if you count, we have about a hundred different models, and wow. they range like they we're talking like smaller storage, which is like the basic carpentry skills you can build this, and then you, you have like kind of your mid range, um, like the pond house or something like that, something that may have a porch or something, and then it goes all the way up to like, and then you can insulate a lot of the smaller buildings as well. So even though it's still a smaller structure, it's a more complex build, and then you get to the bigger stuff like the cabin, and you're talking like you're working with the 8 by 8 timbers, and that's a much larger build. But we all together, we have 100 different models-ish, and then each one of them is offered in a variety of sizes. And they all have different specifications. And then we offer them in different packages. And you can get things fully assembled. You can't purchase everything fully assembled because um, of the size restrictions and all that. But we have things fully assembled, things in kits. We have pre-cut kit packages that are just the shell. And then we have pre-cut kit packages that have um, three-season, what we call it, and then four-season. So if you add it all together, all the buildings, <laughs> is almost, I think right now it's 1500 exactly. <laughs> wow. So, like, yeah, that's a that's a so lot. We keep Joe very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot to keep up with. Jo- Joe's over here sweat. He's sweating as you're talking. He's like, "What is it really that much?" <laughs> nobody, nobody told me that. Uh, oh no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you like? Uh, 
Like, what's some of the more unique situations or projects you've done, Joe? Like, I mean, obviously, you guys are still able to do, like, uh, cupolas on top or, uh, you know, um, pretty traditional storage stuff that you might see. But what's some of the more unique stuff you find yourself in? Um, I think some of the tiny house things where um, people are looking for a full build-out of, and, you know, they don't want to give up any of the comforts of a real home. Mm -hmm. but you got to condense it all into an eight by 20 space. Say there's, there's a lot of challenge there because you really have to um, use every inch and everything matters. And they're, they're, those are probably the most challenging. When you say tiny home, it can mean so many different things too, right? True. Yeah. Uh, like we used to see people, the largest building that we would sell would have been like 16 by 40. So people would consider that a tiny home, uh, 640 square feet is way different than an eight by 20. Correct. Uh, or something on a chassis. <laughs> something on a chassis. Yeah, you're going to have to give up something somewhere, right? Surely somewhere. Yeah, but that, that's not everybody wants to, so you have to really get creative with the solutions. Hello, Shed Builder. Midco is celebrating its 15th year serving you, the Shed Builder. And we couldn't be more excited about serving you in 2023. What started as an opportunity to serve you with top quality steel and fiberglass doors has developed into an opportunity to serve you with many products. Midco offers pre-hung slab and overhead garage and roll-up doors, vinyl windows, aluminum shed and playhouse windows, several hardware items such as anchors, coil nails, T-hinges, drip edge, Z-bar, hurricane straps, T-handles, barrel bolts, D-handles, and louvered vents, and more. Plus, they have an accessory line of products like board and batten molded shutters, flower boxes, diamond plate ramps, and Mr. Cool mini splits. Thank you, Shed Builder, for 15 years of serving your Shed brand. We look forward to 15 more. To receive information on these products and more, call 270-247-7447 or visit midcoproducts.com. Midco Building Products, trusted American craftsmanship. So what's some of the more unique ones that you've seen? You know, the bathrooms can get pretty tight. And then okay. lofts that are pretty small. <laughs> 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 but honestly, the the best designs, I mean, I from, when I see what people do with our designs, I'm always blown away by the uh, after and the, their vision, taking what we provided and then their vision of... Uh, how to make that into what works for them. And I'm always like, I would have never thought of that. That was a great idea. That that's that looks so good. How much of a percentage, like, you know, I have to give exact, just kind of overall, would you see on like a chassis versus like a, like going on a, a skid? Do you do more one way or the other? Is Definitely there, more on skids. Is there more like, just more of a call for that, you feel like? Yeah, and I think it, it gives it, it gives you a lot more flexibility. You could go with bigger sizes, and you're not bound by the um, the over the road width of 102 inches. That really narrows down your options when you're <laughs> literally, yeah. you know, you start. <laughs> yeah. You say I can only be 102 inches wide, and then you start working in. Well, my walls are this thick, and that leaves me with this, and it 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 gets small quick. Do you run into like like different challenges with like municipalities or whatever whenever you're sending out to so many different states? Uh, we try not to um, deal with that as much because we we do send it everywhere and it would be overwhelming to yeah. to try and become familiar and comply with that. So a lot of that is going to be on the customer's end to yeah. to make sure what they're getting is going to work for them, and we will work with people to make it fit but we can't research what is needed and yeah and tell them what's needed it's going to be so different right i mean i'm thinking from when when we were selling like you had to be certified modular to do just certain things uh even from the inspection process the international building codes like i know our little neighborhood uh, we had a local contractor that started building to offer like more affordable housing because we were seeing like uh, a lot of homeless or, or whatever in the area. So, you know, it's like, well, how do we find a way to make something that's affordable, um, but also livable? Uh, and I think they ended up coming up with like, a, you know, having something on a structure because the structure is always the 
part that we got caught up on is, is it on a permanent structure and like what, who defines what a permanent structure is from one place to the next? Yeah, some places, different. if it's on skids and, not, and sitting on blocks, then it's not a permanent structure. Some places consider that to be, yeah. it's got to, it's got to meet the IBC codes. Yeah. So that's where it, it kind of leaves us dumbfounded as to how to deal with all yeah. that. So it's better to, to have the client tell us what they need. Completely agree. We, I think the one that they built as a trial run was like 900 square feet. Which, I mean, honestly, you can do a lot with that. You're not trying to move it down the road. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, 900 square foot home that is affordable, falls within a decent, you know, tax rate or whatever. So that uh, even if you're low income or, or subpar credit, it was something that. So I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to know where the shed ends sometimes and like the, it, the, the other things begin in this industry. I mean, post frame, pole barn. Post sheds, who knows? I mean, a lot of people are, you know, doing this, the, the metal construction. Uh, I'm wanting to create some kind of podcast that kind of help represents that and talks about that industry. And who knows, maybe we can eventually turn something like that customer facing or the shed customer facing. Um, right now, it's easier to talk to the industry than it is to talk, you know, to the customer. Uh, but I think if we can do some good YouTube stuff eventually, maybe we can get that out there. Andy, I don't know. It's a. Sure. It's a challenge, and you probably know that just from like trying to reach your your customer now, is trying to you know narrow that down to who's going to potentially buy something that you got. Yeah, Perfect. absolutely, and that's why you know saying it's hard to to find which things work the best, and that's almost my entire job is is trying to figure out how to get the proper message out to the proper people. Yeah. No, I, I, Buffy's I grabbing it. the mic. Oh, go for it. <laughs> I don't like microphones. <laughs> well, yeah, because we have a variety of products. Like, our customer base is very diverse. And yeah. so we have people that are into sheds. We have people that are in homesteading and outbuildings and have livestock and farms. And then we have people that are into tiny living. So it's certainly not like a one-fits-all. It's not like there's a magical post that's going to make everybody happy. True. We definitely have a lot of segmentation. And we have some personalities. We have um, people that are downsizing, like empty nesters. Yeah. That's kind of a big one. And a lot of those people are interested, you know, but um, haven't really considered in their, by the time they're contacting us, it's, a lot of them aren't completely thought out and they still have a, a journey to go and a lot of thinking to do. But a lot of the people we talk to are at the very beginning of their journey and experimenting with the idea of tiny living and and things like that. And some of our other customers are, like you were saying, like our DIY people. Like a lot of those people end up being really good customers because they have an idea of what they want and then it's like they don't need a lot of nurturing. And then they call and like they have an idea and they're excited to leave something their own. And a lot of the smaller buildings uh, people can really do that stuff with. Well, it's kind of cool. You can grow with them and you, you have like a whole room of salespeople uh, as well that like can lead them through that process and then uh, kind of dream with them, kind of see where they want to go yeah. and then and then give Joe a headache whenever <laughs> they actually yeah. need to to get to the final touch. Um, as far as what you guys do, Virginia, you guys started with like he, Joe was saying like 2D and then yeah. you guys are going into like. I mean, obviously doing CAD designs. It's really interesting watching your process in there and seeing all the guys that's developing out the kind of the instruction model or whatever it is, if you will, for, hey, this is peg A goes in, you know, peg B over I mean, here. We, and We're literally starting with a blank slate. We have the building built in the computer, and we start with a blank slate and build it via drawings from the ground up. Start with these two pieces. Put this down. Here's what the measurements should be. Then put this we're highlighting each part at the that should be used at the time. So via the manual, we're just we're building this piece by piece, kind of using the Lego type um, instruction template where they're just showing you what piece goes where, and eventually, you know, you just you end up at the end. Yeah, and the customers also receiving uh, in their palette each piece is part labeled, and so every piece matches a part in the plans that they're creating. It definitely makes it easier for a personality who's at least somewhat inclined to want to wanna accomplish their own. I, 
part of my favorite part of construction. I, I built homes a little bit whenever I was younger. I, I've, I've at least dabbled in some construction enough to, I don't know, know how to do a few things. And uh, the, the part that felt good was always to be able to look back at the end of the job and say, this is done. I look at it. I see it. I'm finished. The finished products before you, you see where your labor went. Uh, sometimes I miss that because you, you don't know. I, I never know when I'm finished now, you know, outside of uh, being self-employed, it's, it's like you could always be working and you can never be finished at the same time. So, I mean, you're, you're never really quite content with the amount of work that you did because you always know there's more you could have, but it's nice to look at a finished product. And I think that that mentality of that customer, that DIY customer, that that's what's cool is being able to, I'm not sure where to start. Can you guys help me out? Dream with me here a little bit, but you know, I'm thinking about putting a cupola on top. I'm thinking about doing this. We want an Airbnb or something. I, 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 we kind of talked about that. I imagine a lot of those guys want to purchase your products for that specific reason. Yeah. There's a couple um, that I know of that are within, you know, just a couple miles of here that were essentially that exact same reason they you know started with the model customized it to how they wanted it and it was solely to be used as an airbnb and it's a very successful airbnb because it's a really nice location and a really nice and you know they built it from the from the ground up and designed it specifically for that hey shannon who is this cow person i keep hearing about cow That's actually an affordable software solution for shed manufacturers and dealers. Cal helps streamline your order management, delivery, point of sale, and e-commerce. What about RTO and RTO Pro? Yes, on both accounts. Cal handles both in-house and RTO companies with a very easy step-by-step process that produces a web-based contract. What about my Idea Room configurator? Cal and Idea Room are seamlessly integrated. Cal is definitely worth checking out. Call Tristan at 425-359-3279 or visit calcanhelp.com. Where, uh, yeah, it's so different for, you know, I'm used to folks using like, you know, a, sort of like a third-party ERP system or 3D configurator. I mean, to see the way that you guys operate in-house and you're just like super cool people. Like from the minute we showed up, like you're just really, really easy to get along with. And that makes what I do so much easier. And you're all much bigger personalities than what people realize, even individually. Uh, I wish the microphone could really uh, capture all of that, but uh, there's only so much time <coughs> to make that happen. Um, where's sort of the future of Jamaica Cottage Shop? Like what, what, what's the direction? Where's it going? I know that's a big, wide open question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let, I'll let, I'm going to give this to Buffy. Yeah. This is scary. It's not, um, I think it's a. Go for it. Thank you. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion around this topic. Um, but so far, even with the new, um, the new ownership, the, um, we are under WHS homes now and the path doesn't seem very different. Um, but it does seem like we're focusing a lot on taking what we have right now and trying to make it better instead of making it more. Um, and I think that's a wonderful direction. And we're focusing on efficiencies. And I think once we get a lot of this stuff nailed down, um, we'll be able to offer a better product at a better price. And we're going to be in, hopefully, you know, work towards being in a good, a good spot to move from there. But standing on some hopefully, you know, really solid ground with a lot of improvements and new resources. Um, we took a tour earlier and we looked at the cabins, like the cabin frame getting cut uh-huh. um, with a new kind of saw. Um, Joe could talk about that. I don't know the technical terms, but a lot of improvements like that and a lot of efficiencies just to make everything run smoother before we start thinking bigger again. There's even a lot of talk, you know, from a manufacturing perspective, Joe, of like, you know, automation sort of becoming a thing of the future with with sales um, and marketing. You're seeing a lot with like AI, you know, so like everybody's wanting to do automation as much as they can. Uh, but I think with manufacturing, a lot of people like to see that, too. So probably some of the the saws that you added to that is maybe not an automated process, but it's, it kind of, I think it's the repeatability and yeah. that, you know, it can go from the computer design to, uh, to the client and we know that it's right. 
and yeah. you know that the length is right and the angle is what we called out, uh, that's a big benefit. So the way it kind of works is you would have had to have made those call those uh, those cuts. Um, it, well, you need a skilled craftsman that can make the mortises, tenons, lay everything out. And um, while you still need to be have some skills, it just it, it allows the repeatability and that it's you know that it's going to be good. And that it's a little bit different skill set as far as running the saws and the computerized saws yeah but um so what's sort of your background with that like you seem to be pretty knowledgeable on the construction side of things you you really gave a gave a great tour uh and explained everything well i just uh i've i mean i've been in kind of construction fields my whole life but um yeah, i've been here for i think i was just hit seven years um so i've picked up a lot of the what we do here via being here you know Gotcha. Nice. Seven yeah. years. Your anniversary was last month, right? Something like that. It was last this month. Week, maybe. Yeah. So, so, but you did construction beforehand, and and honestly, uh, I uh, I worked in fine arts for most of my life. Okay. But I think that that gives you um, the projects in that are are really varied, and it it allows you to kind of take different looks and ha have a, ho a whole different skill set and you can apply what's needed because all those projects are, none of them are the same. So you have to, everything's got to be approached differently. But when you're kind of working on something like this, where it's all the same principles, you can well pick from them. You didn't have a, a previous career in comedy, did you? No, I okay. worked at a I worked at a comedy club. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just uh, I'm asking for specific reasons, and we'll 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 address off air. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. Andy, uh, what do you think, man? Um, we'll probably wrap up here soon, but just kind of curious your thoughts on on where you see the industry going from your social media perspective, like uh, the marketing uh, stuff that you guys do. Uh, the industry seems to be so fragmented, I like to say. Uh, I can tell it's fragmented even in naming um, some large companies in the Northeast and whenever I'm down South or in the Midwest, people don't even know the names of those companies. And then I can name them larger companies up here and it's like, yeah, we don't really know who they are. And uh, there's there's just a maybe one national brand, maybe two. It, it seems like I know that there's some buyouts and potential buyouts and things like that you've just been hearing about i think people that are trying to create more of a national presence because most people see see the shed down the road and they're like oh like it doesn't matter from one lot to the next for the customer for us inside the industry we notice it a lot and we're very protective of our brand but um you guys one thing i can say about what you guys offer is, is unique it's definitely going to stand out and with a fragmented industry, I think that can only complement what you guys are going to do moving forward. I'm, I'm terribly impressed with what I see versus what I thought. And that's not because Dominic did a bad job explaining it. It's because we probably did a bad job interviewing uh, 10 interviews in and trying to get a vision for it. And now we're adding these other layers to it with YouTube and being able to come out and like take a little B-roll and actually show. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people in the industry – learn from that i mean there's there's guys in texas that you know are not or won't be your competition but you know they they like to go to these shed events and stuff like that so that they can i don't know learn from each other and uh, i think differentiation is the key and customization is the key for the future i don't know you just kind of a ramble there what y'all's thoughts yeah i mean i think where it's going um and you know you were talking about like ai and I, I dabble in a little AI, mm -hmm. uh, not so much visually, because again, I don't like to do uh, digital manipulation on the actual building, because mm -hmm. you know I want to show the actual building. But I, I, I do some backgroundy stuff of that. But I think like where it's going, you know, we were talking about the, the DIY stuff and how everything's like kind of segmented. I really do think it's going to be rather than a broad try to appeal to everybody. I think it's going to be okay to be like, you know, here's this thing that we have that is going to appeal to a certain 
sect of our customers, but a large swath aren't going to be into this one, but they might be into this one. So rather yeah. than trying to just do a, a mass appeal, I'm trying to highlight the different designs, the customization, the what you could make it. And, and I, I kind of feel like that's what separates us like from everybody else is that we do have 1500 <laughs> different designs as of now. And not everybody's going to like every thing. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of serving in smaller doses, what everybody's going to want, I guess. Virginia, after all these years working in and around sheds, more excited now to be working in it or what's your thoughts? Does it seem like it's, it's moving in a better place than it was in 2002? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm just still amazed at how, how far the company has come, I guess. And Mm -hmm. even the, I guess the industry, um, that I don't think it was nearly as much of a thing back then. Now oh. There seems to be more, not only more competition, but more interest. Yeah, I don't know. the. We serve a lot of the different, like, I, I mentioned this on the show before, but we kind of service like the, the newer generation, the mentality of like minimalism and, you know, wanting to rent, don't want ownership and just want something small and don't want to live with a whole bunch because you can do a tiny home. Then you also service sort of like the rest of America that's like, I want extra stuff and yes. I need extra <laughs> and stuff and I can store, <laughs> you know, like, so you, you know, and, and then I want all these animals and I need a the place for them. Yeah. To livestock. Live. Yeah. I absolutely. think our name captures that good with the cottage because it kind of could be, Somewhere where you live, it could be your just where you keep your stuff. It, it, I think that's a good universal for sure definition of what we provide. Yeah, yeah, we didn't even get into like livestock. It's just become huge, especially over the last couple of years. I know chicken coops, yeah, for sure has has blown up, or as they like to call them on Facebook, chicken mansions, because anymore. Like what they're doing with like chicken coops is like amazing. <laughs> we just built a great goat barn for somebody. Really? Yeah, that had all the you know different little little custom customizations specifically for the goats so that they were comfortable. Like a built-in <laughs> couch. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Uh, Most very, importantly, the wiring was run away from them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no doubt. Man, they're ornery. They will get into everything. What is, uh, is that like one of the more unique things that you guys feel like you've built? Like, uh, has there been like this really off the wall? Like we used to get, I don't know. I had a guy come in one time and he was like, I don't need just one shed. I need two. And it's for like my cats. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Almost immediately, I knew we weren't going to sell anything, uh, and the audience will love this because anybody who says I need two sheds, like typically they're just not a buyer. Right. Uh, I think a lot of sellers will identify with that. Uh, I think that's just sort of that that tire kicker. Yeah, give me four while you're at it. You know. Um, we do have a lot of people. We that do have a lot of repeat um, customers. Want like they want to buy land. They want to build their own community. You know, really? and they want to know just immediately, like first phone call, like. I want to buy 13 buildings like f- at first and then I want to buy 20 yeah. more and I got a plan and most of them don't pan out like in that, in that, you know, sale with us. Um, it doesn't mean they don't go on to treat, achieve their dreams in, in different ways or. <laughs> well, there was that one, <laughs> where was it over in New Hampshire where they had nine, I think nine of our buildings and they just took a bunch of smaller buildings and, made a building up you know like took this one and put it up to that one oh, and then drilled okay. the hole in between it so that the chickens could go in here and so like wow. yeah. and they had i think it was nine and they were basically like yeah we're not stopping we'll you know, they're we'll, like we're gonna they're like we have plenty of land left so <laughs> interesting yeah, yeah they're, just, they're going they're going and going but they weren't building for people that was for animals yes that was all for animals. well were. actually she she made a uh a sewing shed. Yes, we have a video on this. Yeah, we yeah. do have a video on this they on our YouTube got it going channel. On over there. <laughs> like, yeah, we were really like these these people are having a lot of fun with this. Yeah. So you guys for the for the sheds you guys move close, you'll go pretty good range uh from here. 
and Vermont out in most of like New England. For the fully assembled stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll send our drivers up to 300 miles. We say all um, 300 miles is kind of limit. Every now and again, you know, we want to go a little further though. Yeah. We might be able to figure something out. But that's our drivers. And then we'll send them for fully assembled things and for kits. So. And then the kits beyond that will just be shipped out. But I mean, they go everywhere. Yeah. Beyond that, we generally ship freight. Um, so the so benefit of being close, even with the kit, is you get our driver, you know. Do you feel like that's a way of the future? Like the, the kits? Yeah. You feel like that's just like going to become more common? I do. Man, for sure. You guys are like, you're like a hidden gem here. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'm, I'm crazy excited to get to visit you guys. Um, I, I'm terrible with names, so I forget names. Uh, you guys are kind and I got to bring in some like some shed geek gear, but um, the lady who brought in the Katrina, Katrina, I don't know why I just couldn't bring it to mind. Thank you, Katrina. Certainly appreciate the, the hoodies, the hats and all the, the goods. It's very awesome. And you guys have been just super accommodating as far as like um, getting to hang out with you guys and crash your day. Uh, I hope your your bosses aren't too mad. So. My, bo- my boss is sitting there right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate we appreciate the hospitality and you guys just uh, sort of letting us crash your experience here, no, uh, your day. Yeah, it was cool. Well, it's yeah. Not everybody wants to talk sheds. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, it's very it's very unique. It's it's yeah. so unique. Whenever somebody was like, you know, you're gonna run out of people to talk to, I was like, no, man. I think uh, I gotta be honest with you. I think for one, I think everybody's got a story. Every company's got a story. There's tons of shed manufacturers, shed haulers, shed dealers out there, and then there's those who supply the industry. I think uh, really going to two shows stretched us not as much for um, guest, but as much for like just us doing everything in house and then wanting to do more. I mean, creating a marketing campaign and creating a, a whole new show to talk about post frame or carports or steel structures and things like that. And there again, it's hard to know where the shed ends and these other things start because you got barn dominiums now, tiny homes, you got log cabins and then these log cabins turn into these really big, nice, you know, homes. And some of these are assembled, some are built on site but then you just got like on the way up here, you know, like I passed you guys this product, but then you've got so many others as well too. And you're seeing vinyl furniture and coops and pergolas and gazebos. And I guess a lot of that's been around for a long time, but like the shed is the shed, but it's, it, it, it encompasses a lot more than that product wise on a shed lot. But then it also, it, it does more than that. Cause it's, it's the people business. That's why we talk about sales, sales philosophy, you know, marketing, you know, how are you meeting your customer? Because we are in this unique time where COVID and post COVID really taught us what online sales and e-commerce was. And you guys have to overcome that through your customization. And, uh, but it's beautiful. You don't have to see your customer. You just have to send it to them, service that. And I mean, you're like the, you're like the uh, Amazon for like the shed, <laughs> for like the shed business. You're having but to much better working conditions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love to think we're more. Our sales, our sales people too um, have great. Things. <laughs> our sales team gets really excited about each project, and you know, it's people can go to the website and they can configure and they can click a button and they can they can you know and then. It'll, we'll work with them to get the delivery and it'll show up. But oh. there's like you, if you make the phone call, you know, you're going to talk to somebody that is, gets excited about your project with you, talks about what you can and can't do. And you can't do that on Amazon. You know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very cool, man. Appreciate you guys letting me be here today. Uh, occasionally a customer might find their way across the podcast. Uh, but typically speaking, it's people from within the industry listening uh, but Andy, just uh, off off the cuff here, if you remember, um, if someone wanted to get in touch with Jamaica Cottage Shop, what's the best way to reach out? Maybe uh, I'd probably be the phone number or or through the website. I would assume we have. Yeah, um, the website has a list of you know departments, phone numbers. It has a lot of forms you can fill out, um, and we get we get all those forms and we reply to stuff pretty immediately and. And if people just want to eavesdrop and kind of learn and they're in 
Oregon and they're like, what are they talking about? What are they doing? They can visit, is it Jamaica cottage shop.com? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then we're on, we're on Instagram and Facebook and, and all that stuff. We, we try to keep the social media interesting for sure. So, yeah, I know you do. I'm sure you do a good job at it, man, for sure. Uh, it's really interesting because Jamaica, you think Jamaica, I guess, right. You know, and it's, it's right here. It's right here in snow country. It's right here. The skis around near London dairy. You guys are kind of in that area. A little bit out in the middle of, of nowhere to some extent, but um, it's a beautiful country. Uh, certainly appreciate being able to be here with you guys today. Awesome people individually in your own right, and uh, the company is just tremendous. Love what you're doing. I see a lot of shops. You guys are really killing it. You're doing amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate that. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate right. it. Thank you.